There's only a couple of commands to install Apache Airflow, but it is very tricky uh, to get it installed. This is the uh, sequence uh, that I've used. First, uh, we need to do a sudo apt get update fix missing. And after you do that, there are a sequence of dependencies that are required. I've used sudo. These are already installed in my environment, uh, but I needed every one of these to get Apache Airflow to work. And then finally, I use sudo minus h pip install Apache dash Airflow. Actually, before I did that, there was one command I did in front of that. Let me be complete here. Export airflow underscore home. I set that equal to tilde slash airflow. I set that first. It will install it in the airflow home directory. Then I did a sudo minus capital H pip install Apache dash airflow. That sequence right there is important. Once you hit it, you'll see a lot of installs happen. Airflow used to be packaged as simply airflow, so it used to be pip install airflow. Uh, the problem that you can run into is that since 8.1, it's now Apache dash airflow. So if you wanted to install an extra package from Python, for instance, if you wanted to install pip install Apache dash airflow dask, but you forgot the Apache dash in front of it, it would install the old version of Airflow side by side with the new version of Airflow and that will simply destroy uh, your environment. At any rate, once we have installed Apache Airflow, uh, it will install it, as I said, in the Airflow home directory. So you should be able now to CD into an Airflow directory. And once you CD into that Airflow directory and do a ls, then you'll see a couple of different files here. A logs directory, a unit test config file, and an airflow.config file. And that airflow.config file, that's the one that we'll go back to, we'll go back to a little later. So now we have it installed. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to initialize the database. So the database is going to have all of your historical and, and your running workflows, your connections, your external data sources, user management, etc. So out the box what you get is you get a SQLite install, which is fine for right now, but in production obviously you're going to want to move on to a more um, enterprise level database. Uh, Postgres SQL supported, MySQL supported. Uh, you can back up the existing SQLite database or any of these databases and I'll migrate the data to those at a later time. However, in either case, before we use that, we need to make sure... Let me go back into my... Uh, let me go back into my... Let me clear my screen here, go back into the right directory, make sure you're in your existing Airflow home directory first. Make sure you're there first. And then what we do is what we want to do is we want to initialize our database and that command is airflow init db. And this will, as you can see, generate a SQLite database. It's going to install the schemas, etc. Take a few seconds to run. errors there. That is to be expected unfortunately. So now we have the database initialized. Now we want to start the web server. That command is airflow web server and we'll have it listen on port 8080. Okay. And from here should be able to go in, grab a browser, and 
and let's go to localhost 8080. And there you go. You have your instance of Apache Airflow running and off the ground. In the next session, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to run a couple of workflows just to test out the environment. Thank you.